now. Welcome, everybody. We're going to get live. We're going to get going on today's webinar. We're going to be talking about the Starbucks coffee play, how to generate 700000 in sales pipeline without your marketing team. Now, um, I hope you can hear me good. Uh, we got a guest today, Joey Wood. Joey and team put this together, had had some amazing results. We'll get into that in just a second. But while we wait for a couple stragglers, um, I'm going to play a short video. Behind we'll every pass, right in. every first down, and every two-minute drill, and behind every game-winning touchdown is a play. Without a playbook, you have no direction, no plan, and no chance of success. But with the right play, you're in position to win. And it's the same in sales. Without the right plays and the right sequence, all right, let's get right on in here. Um, video, if you want to watch the video, you can hit me up after. Guys, this has been insane, um, and I'm going to have Joey introduce himself in just a minute, but Joey and I have kind of colluded on this, um, and uh, we, we posted a LinkedIn article. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, you know, Typically, we write stuff, and it's okay, but this one's got over 10,000 views. We got 500-plus likes, a couple hundred comments. Joey and I both have probably gotten at least two dozen LinkedIn messages like, how the heck do you do this? I want to replicate it. Um, it's been awesome for us, and I want it to be awesome for you guys. So let's get in and talk a little bit about why we're doing this. You know, First of all, I want to just get past a couple barriers here. Number one, look, um, if you've failed at running successful plays in, in the past, it's not your fault, guys. There can be great plays. You can take this information, and you can be making money just like Joey um, has been. Now, number two, um, look, a lot of stuff out there. You can do this. Account-based sales is about you generating pipeline. You don't always have to lean on marketing shoulder to be able to do cool things like the coffee campaign. You can run it yourself just like Joey did, and you can make money. Now, um, with that, I want to make sure you understand our goals for this session. Number one, we want you to believe that you can do it. You can do it alone. You can do it with your sales development team, but account-based sales is about the salesperson driving it, the CEO of the territory running the program. This isn't ABM. That's what marketing does. Marketing sends you know random stuff to customers. They don't follow up on it. They hope customers get back to them. An ABS strategy, you drive it. You come up with the idea. You tell your BDRs, your SDRs what to do. You tell marketing how to support you. We want to get that message loud and clear today. So that's number one. Number two, we want to give you the information get some hands-on experience, answer your questions about how you can start running this, how you can use handwritten notes and mailers to build pipeline in your own area. And then lastly, we want to convey the best way to run plays is through the InsightSales.com Playbooks product, and we'll touch on that more, more at the end. Now, um, just in case you didn't believe us, we are the right guys to be talking about this uh, session. Um, myself, Gabe Larson, I'm the VP of Inside Sales Labs. That's our research and best practice arena here at InsideSales.com. I've been with the company four years. Um, all we've been trying to do, you guys, and I hope you tune into future webinars. We're going to be running more plays. We got one coming down called the Out of Office Play. <laughs> we just ran. It was killer. Um, we got some other fun mailer plays we want to be sharing with you guys. We want to open up the kimono and show you what leads to success, uh, and I'm going to talk about a couple of those today. So, Joey, you mind just taking a second and introducing yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Welcome, guys. We're so excited to have you. Um, this is all about putting theory to tactics and making money, uh, and I'm excited to share some of the, the successes, but also some of the failures we've had. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely been a lot of those. Now, Joey's joining us live from Austin, um, so if he's, his sound quality is a little bit far out, don't worry about it. We're doing the best we can. 
Um, so I want to make sure I know who's on the webinar today, and I want you to grab your Q&A box down there in the right-hand corner. Tell me your name and where you're from, because if you're not asking questions today, you're not getting the information you need. Uh, so please type your name and where you're from in that Q&A box, and then keep firing Q&A questions as loud as uh, as you can. Now, Cameron, again, Joey, try to speak up as loud as you can. Cameron's saying it's a little bit loose, but again, he's joining audibly uh, from out of the office. So apologize if Joey's a little bit distance, but we'll try to have him speak up. Mike, thanks for joining. Brennan, Jessica, James, Cameron. We got 800 people. You got God, tons of people online here. Austin, Blaine, Vicky, fantastic. Keep going. Um, uh, use that Q&A box as we go through and answer your questions on the coffee play. Let's get into it. Um, so um, backstory real quick, how this kind of, how some of this stuff came about for me. You know, guys, I have been, uh, I, I started my career here at InsightSales.com almost 15 years ago. It wasn't uh, InsightSales.com back then. It was actually called Sales Team Automation. I was the only sales rep. Um, I then went to a company called Gallup. Um, Gallup Consulting, spent some time in the Middle East, also in Omaha. But, you know, like many of you, I felt the pain. We were trying to go after big accounts. I went after Domino's, GE, uh, Google, um, you, you know, some real, real big accounts. And boy, did I feel like, um, I remember they just, they said, hey, choose your top 50 list. So I randomly chose 50 accounts. Um, and then I didn't know what the freak I was doing. I just started, you know, emailing and, and calling and, and I didn't have very much success. It wasn't until I met this guy by the name of Clint Carlos and we sat in a room and we started brainstorming, how the heck do you get into big accounts? I mean, we were having almost zero success. And what we brainstormed was a customized box. Now, Gallup has a lot of great books, Strengths Finder, Employee Engagement, Customer Satisfaction. So we did a customized branded box for top 10 companies. One of them was Coke Industries. For any of you who know Coke, huge organization, huge company, hadn't been able to get a meeting with them. We built this branded box um, that had all the books that we had signed by the authors and with their logo on them, a couple other little cool things, sent it out to the key people at Coke Industries, and we got a meeting. And I just remember thinking, oh my goodness. Not to say you shouldn't be calling an email. That was part of it. That's part of the process. Again, that's a big difference between account-based marketing and account-based sales. But that combination of using email, phone, voice, text, mailers became extremely powerful, especially in the world of account-based sales. Now, with some of that information, you guys, we brought it back to inside sales, and we've been running these campaigns like crazy. We call these campaigns plays. I'm showing you one here, and we're going to talk about this one on a future webinar it was awesome. We got Steve Young to sign 80 footballs. We branded the footballs with InsightSales.com. We're going to talk about branding versus not branding. Don't worry about it. But guys, we got two million in pipeline in in a matter of weeks. We almost doubled our pipeline. 100k in AR. How many weeks was that, Mike? We got 100k in 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 the first two weeks, right? Yeah, in the first two weeks, we got 100k of AR. We killed it with some of these, but again, it had a specific structure that utilized mailing best practices as well as a great play around calling, email, voicemail, text, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to get into it. We want to bring Joey Wood on. For those of you who know Joey, Joey was kind of the man behind the magic um, to really develop this play start to finish. And we want to walk through, get your questions. <laughs> and I'm seeing already a handful of questions coming in. Appreciate that, Jamie, Mike, uh, Taylor. Uh, we'll get to those questions in just a minute, but Joey, can you kind of back up for us um, and tell us a little bit about what is this Starbucks coffee play? How did it come about, and why the heck did you even do it? Well, it all came down to I got a family to feed, so that's where I started. Um, no, but on a serious note, uh, as a sales professional, I, I, I wanted to understand if I was being sold why would I take a meeting? You know, and I'm kind of a um, an interesting person. You know, I don't I don't like to waste my time at all with anything ever. So I thought, if somebody did something unique, why would I take a call? And that's where I started. And then I started asking all of my prospects, when you guys buy something, how are you sold? And there seemed to be a common thread. 
and it focused on creativity, unique, personalized um, message. So that's where I started. So, so, um, so I get a little bit of the background. And again, for those of you, Joey keeps speaking up loud. We got a couple people saying, "Hey, give us as loud a voice as you can." Uh, but again, sorry guys, Joey's seriously under under. Uh, what do they call that? Underway? Yeah, maybe underway in Austin, actually visiting clients. Some of that he actually sent this this coffee campaign to yeah, a couple months three back. Three meetings from this coffee campaign. Yeah, so he's got to actually live it, you guys. So this is real time uh, in, in the weeds of it. Um, so Pat, sorry if you can't hear very well. Mike, are we okay on sound? Is Joey okay on sound? Yeah, he's okay. All right, so keep speaking up. So Joey, get the personalized idea, and that's kind of what you wanted to do. Um so can you tell us a little bit about the overview of it? So talk about this coffee campaign. You wanted to do something more personalized. Why, what was then the coffee play? Yeah, so I started out with a list of uh, 10 accounts, and I had three people within each account that I thought would be a buying persona that we would go after on our specific, specific product. And then I wanted to find something that was unique to the local geography. Uh, that had a high perceived value. Uh, so when they received it, they believed, hey, this guy spent some money on us. I feel like I should give him at least 15, 20 minutes of my time. And then I did a ton of research to understand um, who this person is, what do I believe that they care about, and then share some of our, our knowledge uh, so that not only – it was unique, but it would be worth their 15, 20 minutes uh, of their time. That's so, how it started. Yeah, absolutely. So so you then took um, um, you took these top accounts and you ended up sending a handwritten note as well as a, a Starbucks card. It was a Starbucks card with 10, 10 bucks, right? That's what it was? Yeah, so here's the list of what you got. Handwritten note with uh, a few sentences of personalized messaging. And a ten dollar gift card to Starbucks, and roughly a thirty to forty dollar uh, coffee Yeti tumbler, and my business card shipped to your desk at your office. Got it, got it. Um, so that's kind of what they got, and you sent it to you know forty, fifty, um, well about fifty contacts in your target accounts. Um, then you had a, a real cool follow up strategy, which we'll get into a little bit later. Those are some of the questions coming in. Can you talk to us about some of the results that you saw from the, the Starbucks coffee play? Yeah, so almost immediately, um, I started seeing success. Uh, and over a three-month period um, of the 42 mugs that I sent out, uh, I had 36 meetings. Um, I had a total of $700,000 in sales pipeline generated. And in three months, I closed... Roughly $150,000 in ARR. Wow. Wow. Um, guys, this is powerful. This is, I think, something obviously we can all take on. Uh, a lot of people saying, hey, this sounds, you know, it sounds interesting, but Joey, we've got, um, you know, so, well, you know what? We've we got some of the, we got a couple questions. I want to get into budget in just a minute, but let's go through that. Philip, it's a really good question on what's the budget? Sounds very expensive. Uh, but let's get into a couple of these questions, uh, and I've put some that the audience pre-submitted here. So, um, Joey, if someone said to you, hey, I'm hesitant to introduce mailers into my cadence, any thoughts or encouragement? I mean, obviously you found success with it, but is it for everybody? Why or why not? No, it's, it's not for everyone. you got to have, first off, your leadership on board if you're uh, carrying a bag like me. Uh, so you had to pitch internally to get their buy-in, which – means you get the money so it is a little bit expensive to phil's point um from optima it's a little bit expensive but if you can have patience like i'm out here and it's about four or five months from the mailer and i have three meetings with chief revenue officers uh that are going to lead to 100k deals each so that's another three four hundred k in the pipeline uh, but it's not for everyone um, you got to be strategic with your funds uh, the accounts are going after and uh but if you're hesitant, the only reason you should be hesitant is if you're a small company and you're hesitant with funds and patience. Well, and I think something to add to that, you know, Joey, something we've debated, and I've seen a couple of people's questions come in, like, when do you do this versus when do you not do it? 
guys, there's a there's a, a word here, account base that's often utilized, right? If you're running a high velocity or a transactional sale where you've got you know, deal sizes in the five thousands or ten thousands, um, or maybe you're in the one call close range. Um, this maybe is not a strategy you want to really absolutely focus on. Now, there's different levels of this which we want to get into in just a moment. But look, if you're playing in the fifty to a hundred to a half a million dollar, um, you know, deal size, then spending you know a couple thousand bucks on something like this as part of an overall play, it's not a bad idea. But it's a big difference of are you a transactional model, small deal sizes, short sales cycles. Or are you that relational or account-based model, big deal sizes, and then very long sales cycle? These strategies often lean themselves more to that relational model, but we have come up with some ways, you can hit me up a little bit later, to talk about those transactional. If you've got a small sales cycle or short sales cycle, small deal size, there's still things you can do that are more cost-effective. So um, let's get into a couple of these others, uh, and then we got some questions. Maybe I'll try to hit a couple of these now, so Scott talked about, you know, number of people you actually sent it to. Um, so, Joe, you talked about identifying target accounts, and it was about 42 total contacts, wasn't it? Yes. Um, so about 42, Scott, is about what he sent it to. Now, we've got so many questions on budget coming in. I want to just hit on this briefly. So a lot of people saying, hey, well, what if I don't have the budget? How much did this cost? Why did you send coffee? And can I send other things? Now, Joey, I'm going to back you up just real quick here and say for the group, just so they've got it in their back pocket, kind of what the budget was, because you and I went over this. Let me see if I can pull it up briefly and, and, and kind of put, spit it out for them so they got it in their back pocket. We had a total of, um, looks like about $4,200. Um, about three grand for the mugs, two hundred for the letters, five hundred dollars for the Starbucks, and about five hundred for shipping comes to just over four grand. So I know a lot of you, a lot of you asking, how much is this? It can't that can't be crazy. Now, guys, our average deal size is typically in the twenty-five to fifty thousand. Again, that's average. A lot of our deals are over a hundred k. So, you know, the ROI that we saw on this was basically right now. Um, we've already closed 147,000. That's a 35x. That's a 35x on about a four grand spend. Now that's not including some of the time to strategize to build it and follow up on it. It's purely the hard cost. But a lot of you asking budget wanted to make sure you kind of had that, Joey, in your back pocket. So, Joey, how would you answer that question? I don't have a budget to send big things. Why did you send coffee? Should I be sending other things? Well, I first paid for it out of my own pocket. So those guys asking, hey, I fall in the small company bucket. Um, you know, is it worth it? Is it worth it to risk ratio? Um, I believed my skill set. If I could get a meeting and there was a good fit and there was a good pain to be solved, I feel like uh, the product made sense. And so I just threw out the dice on the craps table and said, I'm going for it. And the first round I did, um, I paid for my – investment out of my own pocket and then the CEO found out about it and he said you know I should be paying for that so it's just do we gamble if you're in sales you're in Vegas <laughs> that's right that's right so a couple more questions fall on this so Philip I want to I do want to address this because he said you know hey look my company is into that small company bucket so the thing guys that Joey nailed right is he went into Austin he went into Texas that's his territory and he said hey what is something and, and this is actually potentially even a little over the top what's something that resonates with people in Texas well tumbler mugs tumbler uh, these these coffee mugs they come from Texas I mean that's kind of where the company is located very popular in that region so he doubled down and didn't just say I'm going to identify my target accounts he said what's a gift local to them that really kicks butt. And I thought that was a real kind of cherry on top. Now, Philip, for those of you who are smaller companies, we did actually, a couple of you said, hey, was the was the mug branded? Does it have to be branded? No, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. Guys, get creative on this. Let me walk you through the five-step process of mailers just so you can understand the different levels. One is just a handwritten note. And you wouldn't believe how powerful a note card is. 
Next, you can do a handwritten note with a very small gift. Just send a, a, a five dollar coffee card or a um, a uh, um, you know coast to, you know some sort of restaurant coffee card or an Amazon card. Um, it makes a postage extremely cheap. It's ge a generic gift where you can send brownies or donuts. Then you can get into this branded, where you actually send a card with some sort of branded. Uh, you got the inside sales branded uh, football or the inside sales branded mug. Then on top of that, you've got a note with an extremely personalized gift. Think, I noticed this person went to UCLA, so I send them a branded X of UCLA that's very personal to them. So note, note with generic gift, note with custom gift, note with extreme personalized gift. So Philip, if you're a smaller business and you don't want to spend the kind of money Joey did, I'm telling you, don't tell anybody. Start with the card, man. I'm, we've been testing the cards. You're going to hear it in a webinar coming up later. Killing it. Great card, handwritten note. It's costing us about uh, you know 50 cents to send. Not you know we send them to 20 people. It's 10 bucks, 20 bucks. I mean, come on, that's lunch for you, man. Get creative and fall into that category. Oh, so many questions, Joey. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. So uh, a lot of people. Where was that question? Yeah, yeah, here we go. James saying, um, hey, did you do extensive research to get the right clients before sending them out? Or do, did you just come up with, you know, big hopeful prospects? Um, Joe, you want to touch on kind of the prospecting side of things? I think we actually included that as one of our questions. Maybe touch on that at the moment. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, probably the most difficult part of this is figuring out who to send it to. Uh, I use a combination of our internal data sources, my knowledge of the industry, some of our predictive science, um, and just selfish companies that I wanted to sell to and, and help out. And then I found uh, 10 of those in my territory, again, three to five people that typically are involved in a buying cycle with us. And then each person, I did some, you know, seven to 15 minutes of research about them, what their role is, their social media feed, what I believe their uh, priorities were, um, and some of their things that they care about, and spent two sentences writing about that. And then the other part of the handwritten note was basically our offer, which was we can keep your sales funnel full and keep it hot um, <laughs> to go along the lines of what the, the Tumblr does. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, so so that answers the question, I think, pretty well. Multiple people asking, how do you target the accounts? And, and this is what you want to go after, you guys. I think Joey nailed it. There's always an art and a science here. This idea that you can, you, you know, spending hours and hours of research, no. We used our Neuralytics tool to identify A accounts, people who are most likely to buy from us. We did some research on those A accounts to determine, hey, which of those are in or are in Texas would really potentially enjoy something like this. We identified three personas, three to five personas in each of those accounts, and then we shot them off. You got some science, you got some art there, and then we watched the ROI kind of come in. So don't spend too much time you know, be careful on that. You want to play that balance of spending too much time on your target audience. But yeah, certainly you don't want to just be sending this to random people. They need to be really likely buyers because again, you're putting a little bit of money behind this. So let's not pretend it's just a random email. You got some thought, some strategy, and some follow-up. And we haven't even got into the follow-up process, which we'll get into here in just a minute. So um, Howard says, hey, is it better sending a few coffee marketing packages to each company or to a company? Uh, and then you've got the question on the board here that says, if I can't send my mailer to hundreds of people, should I still send it? Guys, this is the beauty of account-based sales. In account-based marketing, again, and I don't mean to knock those guys too much, and I say that, <laughs> I just got a dirty look from the guy here. I, I don't mean to mock marketing guys too much, but they're running full campaigns, and they're, you know, it takes them six years to create, and, and they run it, and they send it to a thousand prospects, blah, blah, blah. Again, we're account-based sales here, you guys. I want you to knock this off. I mean, Joey team pulled this off in a matter of a, a couple weeks, the, and that's sourcing it, getting it, writing the notes. So you can send this to 10 people. It goes back to the point I meant, said to Philip. Um, you can grab a handwritten note and send it to 15 people. We got a, uh, a play we're running right now where we're sending it to 25 people, just handwritten notes. It's just with one sales development rep. It's, it's taken us uh, two hours to do it. 
It's not a problem. So um, you, I can't answer, Howard, if it's better to send it to one or many. I always like to send it to at least, we try to get up to that 30 number because we want to be able to see if it, there's actually some validity to it. Um, but sometimes it's better to double down and say, you know what, kind of like I did with Coke Industries, right? We spent a ton of time, only sent, we spent more money on less accounts, and we kind of got that real, real personal touch. I'm a fan of doing both. Um, okay, um, don't forget to talk about Joy being a playmaker. How does one play away? Um, yeah, good. Um, okay. <laughs> um, sorry, so many questions and comments here. That was that was more of a comment. Um, so we're going to get uh, Patty into the follow-up strategy. Um, let's see, for Joey, what type of hooks and value props did you put it into the handwritten? Okay, I'm glad. That's awesome. I wanted to get to that one. So um, Joey hit on it, Austin. If you didn't hear it, the, the idea was to come up with a generic handwritten note, um, uh, but personalize the first few sentences. So each person did some research on a contact, that contact, then the first couple lines was that trust ladder concept. Hey, I noticed you just changed jobs or you just became the VP of sales. We want to. And then we put in that stupid line about keeping your pipeline full and hot. <laughs> and I say stupid, Joey, but I mean, you know, you got it. You usually want to tie your gift in with your note. But first two lines, Austin, were very personalized in the handwritten note. And then we went into kind of that generic message about keeping your pipeline hot and full and we're the only team who can do it, and Playbooks is the only product that can facilitate this type of engagement that we're literally doing with you. So, Austin, I wanted to make sure I answered that part. A lot of people saying, guys, um, how do you write handwritten notes? It takes a lot of time. Um, <laughs> geez, uh, God, so many good questions. Um, there is a couple partner guys that, that we are working with to build handwritten notes into our product. So with the click of a button, you can send a handwritten note. Now there's different versions of handwritten notes. Um, you got notes that are just uh, Times New Roman font. You got handwritten notes that are an automated handwriting. It means it's actually your handwriting in blue font. And some of you may say, oh man, Gabe, that, you know, that still doesn't look good. I've tested it. It works awesome. But again, there's different levels. I can do that version in, with a couple clicks now. Or you can go into that full handwritten note, send it and ship it yourself. But I'm telling you, we got to get away from that. So you're going to see some cool stuff hopefully coming down the pipe from InsideSales.com to help with that. Uh, guys, I'm going to keep getting to the questions, but I want to get to some of these because um, so many people have asked um, this cadence concept. So I get that you sent the mailer um, – and a few people have said it. You're absolutely right, Gabe. Account-based marketing, they just send random stuff. They don't have a follow-up strategy. Sounds like you guys did something different. I don't want to give away all the secrets, um, uh, Joey, but I want to give away some of them here. Can you walk us through kind of your follow-up strategy and how you kind of followed up after the mailer? Yeah, so here's the most important part. Um, closing that loop. Once you turn the lights on and you do the effort, don't let it go down the drain. Um, so there was a very thought out process, um, and I think we're going to dive a little bit deeper next week. Um, but to give you a, a teaser here, it's a combination of phone calls, emails, voicemails, um, social media outreach, and then uh, to, the cherry on the top was personalized text message to their mobile phone. And that seemed to do the trick. Yeah. So um... – so yeah, the guys. Interestingly, um, Joey brought text into the the equation here, and texting is something that's becoming hotter and hotter. We just did a study in Inside Sales Labs. Fifty nine percent of sales reps surveyed said they're finding ways to use texting in the sales process. Joey was able to successfully do um, kind of bring that in, I think, in a very effective way. But at a high level, Joey, your follow up strategy in partnership with your sales development rep, right? Um, you, you worked with them extensively on this. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so you basically had a series of about th four phone calls, three voice messages, a couple text messages, a couple social interactions, and then the mailer. Uh, at a high level, about 15 touches over a couple-week process was kind of the general idea. Is that right? Yep, you're right on. Um so a couple of questions on this. A lot of people saying, hey, we'd love to see some templates. 
um, some of the actual stuff that Joey wrote. We are going to offer that here in just a minute, so stick on. Um, some people saying here, Joe, follow up after the gift was received. Uh, what was the cadence? So we talked a little bit about the, Nikki. I, hopefully that cadence walked through it a little bit. We will give um, option to get the exact cadence here in just a minute. Um, what, what, so we got here, Blake said, when does a gift cross the line and become a bribe? <laughs> Is there a spend limit? Can gifts be uh, too personal? Um, Joey, let me let me say something. Maybe you can answer this. So, guys, um, I'm so glad Blake said this because if you haven't heard the mantra of give to get, um, then then you probably haven't been in sales long enough. Every single thing we do in sales and marketing is a bribe. Uh, this webinar is, for heaven's sake, this is a bribe. We wanted your information. I mean, is that inappropriate, Blake? I don't know. Um, you know, people offer to download free templates. If you go to our website, you can get some of our research. It's all bribing, and it's always about trying to give you value to get something back there. So I believe it's always a bribe. But your, your follow-up questions are absolutely right. Is there a spend limit, and can it be too personal? I believe there is a spend limit, and that's something you got to decide based on your average deal size and what you want to do. Testing is the only way to figure that out, though, Blake. Number two, is it too personal? Um, again, I, I think you can get inappropriate very fast. I think if you get personal and you keep it in things like college they went from or something that means something to them, um, guys, the world in which we live is personalization trumps automation. So I would, I would, I would ask you, I would uh, challenge you to try to go farther down that personalization train and have one slap your hand rather than keep it in the generic world of just spamming them with random emails as a lot of people are doing. You know, we got these tools now that we can just do a marketing email campaign. We're just spamming people with emails. No, personalization trumps automation. I still believe sending one-off emails is extremely powerful for sales reps. Joey, what would you add to that? I know that was kind of a long-winded answer. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head. It's all about perceived value. If this person wants to talk to you, you know, he or she will, will allow time to talk to you, whether yeah. there's a gift or not. Yeah. The gift just separates you from all the other people parking up their tree. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Patty, Patty just, you know, she's threatening me here. That's not a threat, Patty. I'm teasing. Patty's saying, hey, you should do some research and find out what companies can and can't receive gifts. Patty, you're going to be seeing from Inside Sales Labs. This is as hot as anything. Uh, again, on our LinkedIn article, 10,000 plus views in, on, on this webinar. We got 800 people. Um, I mean, th those are big numbers. Um, so you're going to be seeing Inside Sales Labs doubling down and doing research on what gifts are landing best, how to do it. So this is just the beginning. We actually have three other campaigns or plays that are already in play. <laughs> no pun intended. So um, do follow up with this, Patty, because you're definitely going to get some more information on this. Um, okay, uh, we better keep going. Oh, man, we still got time. Okay, guys, keep the questions coming. This is fantastic. Um, how did you find to run? <laughs> yeah, this is a great one, Joey. How did you find the time to run and initiate this yourself? I mean, a lot of people saying, hey, um, this is a marketing thing, and and I told you I've worked with marketing on it, and they love to spend months and months and months doing ABM campaigns. Account-based salespeople do these uh, weekly. Um, how did you, Joey, find the time to do it, and how long did it actually take you? Yeah, uh, you asked my wife, and she probably would have said, "Keep work at work," but I spent a lot of time outside of the office writing these notes. That was probably the most lengthy. The, the personalized handwritten notes, guys, yeah. and I'm telling you, when you do this, that that's why these tools, and you can hit me up after, we got recommendations, we got some vendors we're partnered with to automate the note process, and again, it's how level of personalization you want to go, but Joey hit it on the head. The longest thing is writing 50 handwritten notes. We can get you very close to, quote unquote, handwritten looking notes, and again, I know some of you are already saying, come on, Gabe, guys, you got to find the balance, again. You got to test each one, but this will the thing that'll kill you is, the, is sometimes these longer handwritten notes. Keep going, Joey. Sorry. No, and then it's all about the follow up. Like close that loop. You turn the lights on. You send the gift. Follow up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Waste your money. 
Yeah, I mean, the thing that I loved about Joey, Joey, it, what was all in all, you had this done and dusted and out the door in under two weeks, right? That, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's killer, you guys. Go ask your marketing team and ask them how long they'd take to do something like this, and they'll ta they'll say, we do one a quarter. Again, it's just, we, we got we to gotta, we gotta be different here. Um, good. Um, if I want uh, help with this, what companies would you recommend? Oh, I threw this one in here, you guys. Hit me up on this after. A couple companies can really help you source um, source some great material. They can do the brand. They can do the generic gifts. Uh, hit me up after, and I'll make sure I get this. Let me hit a couple of these questions. Did you find a particular day of the week that worked better than others to have this land on people's desk. Joey, when did you send this? Um, you know, did yeah, you? Yeah, so that, that was where our research came in, Gabe. I tried to have it land on a Wednesday or Thursday. Um, sometimes, you know, because of the post, it, it delayed or, or got there earlier. But I found that if I could try to have it land on Wednesday or Thursday at the highest uh, success rate of, of getting somebody on the call within the next four touches. Yeah. Is, is where it kind of, I got a yes or a no or a no answer. So, yeah, that goes to Patty's question, you guys. I mean, we found in most of our other research, with both with phone calls and emails, that you typically are finding better access outside of weekends. Um, your better access is kind of that Wednesday, Thursday concept. So we typically are gauging around that. But to, pa to Patty's point, guys, there's no research on this. This is like blue ocean. This is white. There's nobody is doing this right now. Now, again, some of you have said, Hey, my dad did this 30 years ago. They sent stakes to somebody. Guys, this is all coming back in, but you're seeing it come back in in an automated way that's efficient, plugs into CRM, et cetera. Barbara asks a good question. She says, hey, it seems like there's a lot of risk to the brand if someone from marketing is not involved in the messaging and the material you use. Yes, that's exactly yeah, right, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we probably shouldn't say that. Now, truthfully, I gotta. <laughs> but Joey, you see these comments coming in? We probably yeah, shouldn't have. Great. We probably shouldn't have uh, 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 cheered so much. But don't, guys, don't, don't. I mean, we're not that anti-marketing. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, Barbara, he, here's the truth of this. Um, um, so this this one was just purely rogue. Um, and um, the truth be told, if you are doing branded stuff and you're going real high end, um, you should absolutely involve marketing. I mean, Joey was real strong about involving his SDR team. Again, one of the big differences between account-based marketing and account-based sales is this idea that sales runs it and marketing and sales development support. In account-based marketing, marketing runs it and then the sales you know, either never knows about it or... There's some sort of weak follow-up. So um, to Barbara's point, I love when the, the sales rep acts like the CEO of his or her territory and gets others involved to help out. Uh, and if you're doing high-end gifts uh, or mailers, you should definitely do that. Now, truthfully, Barbara, if you – I mean, sales reps send emails all the time. They, send, they, they, they talk on the phone. You can't control everything a sales rep says. So especially if you're just doing a generic gift, you guys – with a handwritten note, and you're not trying to get all the branding right, boom, just do it. You know, I mean, totally just run with it, uh, at least, you know, from from our opinion. I mean, we call these guys playmakers, and playmakers get crap done. Okay, um, at what stage do you decide to move on to the next process or cut your losses? That's coming from Andy. So, Andy, what the team did with 42 people, 42 contacts, we ran a full follow-up strategy, right, kind of that 15-touch. Uh, we'll talk about the, the, the specific cadence in just a minute. Um, but uh, once that cadence was done, that 15-touch-ish cadence, then we co cop stopped it there, and now we're moving on um, to um, – we've got other plays we're running. Again, Joey's got a really cool one that he's initiated. Uh, again, it's got mailers. It's got phone texting. It's got kind of the whole thing. Um so we ran the whole cadence, and at that point we said, okay, these guys are done. We'll move on to our next play. Um, so a lot of people saying, hey, how do you time um, you know, mailers being sent out? Um, guys, everything in the U.S. that we've found is, you know, from, we're sending it from Utah. That's typically four days to the coast. Most stuff 
you know, is two to three days. So we typically time our cadence like that. We say, hey, we send it. We were sending it to Austin. We gave it three days and then we started our follow up after that. So you typically with the shipping, you can figure out kind of the timing of, of that follow up strategy. So um, let, let's kind of just uh, cr- 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 kind of bring this to a little bit of a close, you guys. So, um, Joey, I want you just to remind real quick the people um, one more time the results of your coffee campaign. Can you hit on that one more time? Yeah, so I had 36 meetings. Um, three of them, which are this week in Austin. So it's four months down the road, I'm getting three meetings. Um, out of 42 cents. So you do the math, 36 out of 42. Um, 700K in pipeline generated and 147,000 actually closed money in the bank um, with probably another 200 this month and hopefully um, some more coming next month. Uh, it's, it's powerful, guys. It's powerful. So keep bringing the questions. We'll go to a little more Q&A after my quick, uh, my, my quick question here. So how many of you, um, if, if, if we showed you the exact templates, the exact process that Joey followed to be able to get 147,000 in under three months in ARR, 700,000 in pipeline. How many of you wouldn't want to do that? Um, <laughs> some of you saying rhetorical question, Gabe, right? Um, yeah, absolutely, right? I mean, this is a play that you can run. How many of you are excited about what we just talked about? Right. I mean, there's some really cool stuff here. I hope some of you can take some of this in there. How many of you and I I got to show this. how many of you are feeling just a little bit overwhelmed um, with some of the stuff that Joey shared or the strategies or the tactics um, that he basically presented today? I know some of you saying there's a lot coming down. I want to throw out just a quick offer. I want to spend the next two minutes, five minutes. um <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. And, and and throw out a quick offer because we've had so much action on this. We have so many people, so many questions on this, you guys. I want to just give you a quick offer to go one step further on this program. So um, here's the offer. Um, Joey and I have created an hour-long video training that walks through the six-step process of how the hell he did this. How we strategize the campaign, the list we came up with, the offer, the skill, all the notes, um, the effort, the exact cadence we ran with, what the text messages said, the results, and then the system that we used. Um, and again, 147,000, 700,000 in pipeline. We want to give that to you. I know some of you saying you can probably do it on your own. Uh, and you can't, and that's totally fine. We're always here for a conversation. But for those of you who want to take the plunge, we want to get a little bit deeper into that strategy. So number one, we want to give you a Starbucks coffee play video. It's an hour course, walks you through exactly, and it has all the templates. It has all the voicemail templates, all the email templates that Joey used to be successful. Next, we want to take you through the cadence, and I'm only flashing it here um, because we want you to get – all the best practice templates that we used. I, he had a great phone script to introduce. The call down that they did beforehand to actually get the addresses, the email text, the email uh, script, the texting scripts can be extremely valuable. So that's number two. Number three, we want to continue the conversation. Um, we got a closed Facebook group called Playmakers that we want you and in, in, we, want, we want to invite you to to be part of continuing the conversation so you can work with myself and Joey to continue this process. So number one, we want this one hour video training. Number two, we want to get you these templates, the cadence, the exact scripts that were used. Number three, we want to get you access to our Facebook group to continue the conversation. And then next, we want to do a one on one session. Uh, do a excuse me a group Q and A session. Talk about what your strategy is. Answer any specific questions you have about running this play effectively. Now, look. Bottom line is there's some real value here. Um, Four ninety nine all included, but we felt like we want this to be available. We want you to be able to run it. We want you to have access to it, and so we're discounting it to forty nine bucks. Um, you've got a link right here, 
that gets all of that for you. You can sign up. The course goes live tomorrow at 8 a.m. The 49 bucks is only a 24-hour offer, um, but it gets you all the access you need to the templates and skills we talked about. So, Dave, Dave are you bribing these guys? I'm, I'm bribing you guys. I'm, I'm more than bribing. So I throw this question out. Look, guys, if you had a successful sales play that made you money, how much would it be worth? Um, there's some real value in here. $4.99 discounting to $49, bucks, but we're only going to leave it open for 24 hours. Um, we want to get intimate with those who want to take the next step. We want to continue the conversation. So grab your coupon code. You can take this link. It'll give you the $4.99 to $49 discount. Um, and boy, we think there's some great value. Again, it'll only be open for 24 hours. So please um, grab it, check it out. Um, we want, again, it's not for everybody. I get that. But for those of you who want to implement this and you want a coach doing it, you want best practices, um, we would ask that you grab the link and um, uh, grab it. So, Andrew, here's the link on the screen. Um, that'll take you. It'll give you the coupon code. Um, it is available there as well. Um, a lot of other questions, you guys. So I'm going to leave this open for just another minute here. Um, so, uh, you know, a couple of people saying, hey, we really want to take this next step. Kassam is saying, hey, can you leave it open a little bit longer? We got to get an approval process for something like this. Guys, that's why we discounted it from $4.99 to $49. Bucks. And again, you're getting the, the one-hour training course, the coaching session with Joey and I. You're getting all the templates. You're getting the Facebook page to communicate with us directly. Um, this is hot enough that we wanted to make it something that, um, that this group can take advantage of and do something fun with. So uh, I'm going to leave the link open. You'll have this available. Again, um, you'll see it on labs.insidesales.com. Grab this link. Um, grab the course. The information will go live at 8 a.m. tomorrow, and that discounted price will stop. Um, 24 hours from now. Kassam, if you've got other things going, hit me up and we can certainly talk about it. So, guys, a couple other questions that came in, and then we'll wrap on this here. Um, so, um, you'll, you'll see that. And, Andrew, good question. So, where does the $49 get applied? If you click on the link, you'll just have a quick checkout, Andrew. You can kind of uh, go through that. If you have problems with the coupon code, hit me up and we'll make sure you get that. Guys, can you make sure James just gets that coupon code? He's having a hard time finding that. Um, so we will be talking more about this. Joey, a couple last questions in here. Um, specifically, um, kind of the last piece here, um, and maybe it is a good thing. They want to know, outside of the coffee play, what else does Joey have up his sleeve as far as secrets? Um, I don't know if you want to give that one away, but I thought it was a great question. Thanks, Daryl, for asking it. Yeah, just um, just think about stuff you can put on your desk and have a good time with. Um, not, probably not a not not a terrible answer here. Um, so um, for those of you, if the coup if the coupon code isn't working, hit us up. We'll make sure we get it to you. Just let them know they have to input it. Um, you do actually have to input the coupon code. So um, if I click on this link. Uh, we'll go to it here real quick, just so you can kind of see the idea. Oh, I'm already logged in. Um, so let me sign out here for those of you who are struggling. Um, let me pop it on. So I click on the link here. Um, you'll see the, the 499 course. If you go to the buy 499, um, you log in to create an account. Um, you can sign in with LinkedIn, and then it will actually ask you for your coupon code. Um, and you can apply that coupon code or we'll maybe tr you can see it here, have a coupon. I press that, have a coupon. And then that coupon code you'll find right in the window here. Um, uh, and, and we'll make sure we email it out your screen sharing. Um, so that you can see that um, live and well. So, in fact, it would be potentially easier. We may just try to make that course just the 49 for this limited time, so you don't even have to use a coupon code. But check that link out, um, and we will follow up. Some of you have the question. Um, good questions, you guys. So, guys, really appreciate it. Um, if you have problems, again, we will email out. Contact me directly on LinkedIn. Um, really, really appreciate it. And